the COE cab over floor assembly. So uh, over here. Again, that's your main door to enter it. The left hand side. So that's the passenger side. On these ones, that's where the seat's going to go for the passenger. On these four balls. Yep. That's where they're going to mount it. And then right here, they're going to put a bed. Okay. So it sits left and then right. One of their front panels will go at the front and the rear wall. And then they trim it from inside. Okay. So that, that comes in three sizes. So 1.7, 2.3 and 2.8, that's the width of the cab. Yeah. So 1.7 barely have any space to sleep in. Yeah. 2.3 is uh, good for a normal built person. Yeah. And a 2.8 is a luxury model of them. They'll okay. have a queen size bed in it. Okay. With the like print doors and everything. Yeah. So how many different kinds of muff laps do you think you make? Close to 100 types, I reckon. 100 different types. I reckon, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's a few. Yeah. A few caravan trailers. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's a lot. All different types. Yeah. And what's the process like? How do you start? Uh, we start with a, like a flat sheet. Yeah. Um, then we just get a knife, put it on, put it in the uh, in the press over there. And this, um, is the, this is the press that so you use? press over there, yeah. yeah. And then um, yeah, that just cuts them out and then, okay. um, then you have a mud flat. Yeah. Fantastic. That's pretty easy. Yeah, pretty easy. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yep. So how long have you been here for? I uh, end my third year now. Third year, great. Yeah, cool. Yep. Good to meet you. No worries. Hi, my name is Rahul and I started at Assemco back in 2010 as an assembler. I've been working here since then. I've worked at the different roles. So I have uh, actually been worked as a training manager. I've learned all the assemblies here. There's about 120 odd assemblies and I have learned about 110 of those ones. And still learning and uh, I've recently moved into this production manager role which is about three years ago and I have been enjoying this role since then. Perfect. And what do you like to do on the weekend mate? Just play cricket with play my cricket. son. Yeah. Medium pace? Medium pace And your baller. son plays as well? Yes. Is he as good as you? He's better than me. He's, he's better a, than he's you? He's a better baller than, oh, he's a better batsman than I am. And he's, he's 13 right? Him. Yeah, he's 13. Wow. He's played uh, a couple of times he has played actually district career. Wow. And he did actually get picked up for the pioneers as well. Next next Australian cricket superstar, mate. You never know. That's fantastic. It could be, yes. So for Volvo trucks you do some Yep, yep. these bufflers. Yep. yep. So we send the shields out to get polished. So this side, the polish side will be visible to the customer. And then we send the another side, put them together. Basically this is the shield for the bufflers. So it protects these ones getting overheated. So like in case you have to touch these one, they won't be as hot as the actual muffler would be when it's on the truck. So this is a truck muffler and you guys yes. do this, you put, put them together for Volvo? Yeah. Yep. So what, what's involved in doing that? Uh, we have to get the fuels polished, a yep. bit of welding, yep. and uh, just a bit of fiberglass insulation in there yep. and just assembly so that's the sleeve of box biggest assembly we do so this is the ca cabin for a kenworth truck yes for yep. the conventional truck yeah so this is a, a 50 inch that's a t oh well, i'll tell you the model number for this one as well so there's a couple of them in there so this is a t909 yeah very common model for kenworth truck yep. and one of the best i like it it's spacious and it's uh Pretty good once it's all built. A uh, Kenworth looks really good when when it's built. But this is uh, where this is the basically the sleeping area. Yeah. So they'll have two shelves here, like uh, yeah, these high shelves. One this side, one this side, and this is your sleeping area. They put the bunk over there. They tie the bunk over there on the back wall. So you bring the bunk down. This will be your sleeping area, and then here, this is your space behind. That's where the seat's gonna be. Yeah. So this is your passenger. There's your driver and the firewall comes in, side doors. So it'd probably be up to there where these blue crates are. So, so this you can kind of see that these cabins are fairly spacious. Is that where the bed goes? Or back there? Yes. Okay. So they can fit up uh, fit about a, a queen size bed, I believe. Wow. What sachets can this machine make? Yeah, so this particular machine will range from about nineteen hundred to two thousand in an hour, depending on the Powder that we're putting through some powder that we have to run it a little bit slower 
to be able to push it through it might be a bit of slightly heavier powder, might be more in it. Whereas your smaller, lighter ones can be one of the higher speeds that we can actually push them through in an hour. Right. And how do you decide So what we also do is we work with our clients. Uh, we've we've had been approached by a couple of people who don't know where, what to do. They've got this great product idea and they've sort of tested the market a little bit, but they don't actually know the machinery they need. They don't know who can help them with packaging, designs and all that sort of thing. I've been working with a customer recently who came to me with just that, an idea. And we've been working through with them about what machinery they need, the design, the packaging requirements nutritional labels, shelf life testing, everything. And they're about to start in the next month or so with us now that we've got everything in alignment. We've got another customer, you know, we don't just do your food. Um, I've got another customer who's about to come on board who does cosmetic um, ink. So it's a temporary tattoo that lasts about three weeks on your skin and you can use it to see whether you want a tattoo, a festival, anything like that. So we're in the middle of being able to source his product overseas for him, bring it in, and then we'll package it here and distribute it for him. So basically someone has an idea and you make it work? Pretty much. Come yeah. to us with your idea and we'll make it happen. <laughs> I, I love that idea. I've had so many ideas. Yeah. And I've shelved a lot of them because I didn't need someone like you. Yeah, yeah. look, it's, it's definitely a lot of people out there, you know, do have great ideas and they just don't know where to start. So yeah. we've got a really broad network from sourcing materials to sourcing equipment and machinery um you know getting all your shelf life and nutritional panel and um you know working out whether we need to, whether it's tga approval required um right through to then obviously managing it producing it either keeping it on our shelves and distributing it direct to customer or sending out to the customer's warehouse and they distribute from there so we really integrate as much or as little as the customer needs or requires so that's amazing yeah, we're flexible. <laughs> conventional cab overs so and uh, three different models. Yeah, three different models. Yeah. Uh, conventional and uh, cab overs and yeah. a day cab. So day cab is a shorter version of a conventional one. Yeah. So we'll probably start off with the door openings. Yeah. And we'll just go uh, all the way through there. These are the door openings. So these, so these ones are the door openings for a big semi trailer. Yeah. yeah. This is for the conventional ones. Yeah. And on this side. They had the cab over once. Yeah. So those were the door openings and then you've got a a day cab rear here. Yep. Which is a, a like a tip of trucks. 
Tipper trucks. Yeah, yeah. so it's just mainly used local. Yeah. You can't go into set in them because there's no sleeping, sp uh, sleeping space. So you guys make the, what do you make for the tipper truck? Oh, this is the back, uh, back wall of that. Oh, the back wall. Yep. Yeah, and that's yeah. the fire walls. Yep. So this is uh, for all the trucks, conventional and cab overs from the day cabs. Yep. All these ones. And then uh, these are the base frames. So this, when uh, we deliver this to Kenwood, we deliver as a kit. So it's got the door openings, base frame, and a firewall. And then what they do is uh, they put it together. So that base frame, the shorter bit, is the front of the truck. That's where the firewall's gonna go. Yeah. And this is the floor it's around here. While looking at this, this one's going to be an automatic truck because yeah. it doesn't have anything to poke out the gear stick. An automatic truck? So this one's going to be an automatic one. Wow. Yeah. And when you get the seat, that's where the driver's seat goes. Okay. That's where the rider seat goes. Yeah. And then they put a sleeping cabin behind that, yeah. which we're going to go there on the far end, okay. the sleeping cabins for them. Yeah. Whether it be through the website, whether it be a referral, um, and then we'll have a phone conversation and just get the initial outline and brief and make sure it is something that we're able to help them with. Um, if it's not something that I have an expertise in, we have, I have a big team behind, like lots of resources and things that I can pull on. Um, and then we sit down and have that discussion in person and they bring into the facility and then we work out all our steps and we come up with a bit of a project plan and look at how long and what we need to do and, and and we just went from there. So we also do, for one of our other customers, we do all their event stuff. Um, so all our stuff along there is all their displays and um, brochures and um, you know, pull up banners and everything. So we really can help with the marketing material side of it as well, if we need to. Yes, yeah, so I'm actually headed over next month the Gold Coast to, to an event launch for one of our customers to just help them really set it all out and set the shop up and make sure it's all visually yeah, appealing to the eye. So we pretty much, yeah, we do everything end to end. <laughs> um, you know, 3D customer service side of things as well, we can offer that. So. This is a back wall for the cab over truck. So this is the front panel. Yep. So you do realize what cab over conventional is, yeah? No, it's fine. So the cab over one is uh, the one with no bonnet. So that's yep. more compatible to be driving into the cities and stuff where you've got less space to turn the trucks. Yep. They use more, mostly cab overs. Yep. So this is the front. Yep. It'll have no bonnet. Oh, uh, okay, okay. And those ones, conventional ones, will have a bonnet. Okay. And the day cabs will have a bonnet and a. it will not have a sleeping cabin. Okay. So yep. here at Asemco, you're putting together all these parts for Kenworth trucks? Yep. Okay. Hi, I'm Marinka. I'm the product development manager for Paco. Um, these are products for one of the customers we do. So we do their shake and take bottles. Um, we've got a bottling machine that puts it in and puts the cap on. We also do individual sachets them as well as then put the sachets into the kits uh, and boxes and we send that to their warehouse so for them, to do for them. Yeah. distribution yes. but in this case the customer already had all the box and the film and everything yes we simply took on the manufacturing side for them yes um, and in some cases we'll do that from scratch we'll design everything for them and supply them that but in this case we're simply supplying the labor for them mm -hmm. Um, and what was her problem? What problem did we solve? She was struggling to find someone to do this. Uh, so with her, we she was originally came to us just about the bottles. She was struggling to find someone that could do it in the smaller MOQs. Everyone wanted really, really big ones. Um, it's really what we base our model on. We, we want to help the growing business that doesn't want to do 50,000 bottles at a time. Um, so when she came to us, she just presented us with this. Um, and after a, a meeting with her, I actually suggested that we look at doing a sachet for her as well and putting it into a box. Um, it's now her number one seller, which is mm. fantastic. Mm. So 
Um, I spoke to her just last week and they'd sold 100 in one day. Yeah, right, wow, yeah. that's great. Because she's so. a small operator just starting off. She started in a backyard, if you like, or in a shed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it wouldn't be possible shed. for someone like that to start off with a minimum order quantity of, say, 100,000. No. Realistically, you're helping that business to find a way to succeed. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, um, yeah. There's definitely a market out there um, with a lot of our customers and people we speak to. You know, they've started and they've grown their business and it's now too big for them to be still doing at home, but not big enough to go out and, you know, they don't want to spend $100,000 on, on getting an order. Yeah. They want to be able to work with someone and we're really adaptable in that way where we can grow mm. and we'll start small with them. And we'll, I think we did, our first order for her, I think was about 100 um, right. where our last order for her was 2000 mm. So potentially, if she wasn't 100% sure which products were going to sell, she could almost test it out with you guys. Yeah. And that would give her the answers she needs to be able to be confident to place larger orders. Yeah, look, we definitely look at, with the Heal Thyself products that we've just done, um, we sort of went to market with them, we tested it, we've then got feedback, we're now refining it, and we're... Um, come June we'll launch the next lot um, there's another event in March where we're tweaking some of the products um, but definitely we work with our, pro our customers in developing what they need and making sure they're identifying their market so great thank you yeah. very much no worries <laughs> um, so with our bottling machines some of the items that we do um, we can do as you can see different sizes bot size bottle different widths as well. This is all adjustable and adjustable in height. Um, the labels we we man, uh, sorry, manually do. So we'll get a roll like that. Um, we do have some um, aids that do help us to make sure that it goes on straight and that we've got it right every time. Um, we also can do tub filling um, through this machine as well, which is very, very handy. And then we do obviously different pouches and, and fillings. So this is one of our small ones, but we do a lot bigger ones. We do recovery soaps. Um, we do um, an edible soap that comes in a pouch. We do the raw foods right down to teeny tiny sizes as well. So how many do you think we could put through in say an hour? So this machine is capable of around two thousand an hour. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, once again, it does depend on what we're putting in it, how much we're putting in it, um, are we hand capping, are we automatically like we're using the machine to cap, so it really does depend on the application and what we're doing at the time. Yeah. Um, we can, um, yeah, I mean we've had it as low as 500 an hour um, and we've had it sort of as high as sort of 12, 1300 an hour with this, the current ones that we're doing. So with this machine, we have the ability to put a lot of, quite a few different powders through it. Um, we have the ability, we put like a colon cleanse, which is a um, brown down flour and seed mix. Um, we can put protein powders through, pre-workout powders. Um, uh, we can do teas, as long as they're a little bit fine, like a bit of a finer tea. So pretty much anything that can fit through our auger and through the system and the sorry the outlet, we're able to do. So we can't do obviously your really chunky things through these machines, but definitely most powders. What about the most popular powders that you guys do? Uh, so the most popular powders that we do here are, are obviously your proteins, your pre-workouts, um, your recovery powders. We do some of those. So. Uh, when I say recovery powders, things like your, your greens. Um, we also do some teas through this, um, which are a, a finer blend and not like chunky, well, not as chunky and heavy as some of your loose ones. Um, but they're probably the most common ones we have going through the machine at the moment. Are they the rider seats? So these are seats for Kenworth Truck? Yes. Yep. And uh, these ones are the passenger seats. So they are uh, air suspension seats. So there's a little compressor in the Canberra truck which flows all the air into them. Yeah. So they are really comfortable. Yeah. They are. And, uh, Why do um, cars not have this kind of suspension underneath the seat? Where, see how under there you've got that? Yeah, you've got the storage here. Yeah. It's like a tiny like, 
a why is tiny it, Why is it the cars don't use these kind of comfortable seats like this, these suspension top seats? Cars are trying to say money. And money costs more. Yeah. I mean, they're good seats in now that they're good for long runs and where yeah. we use, we don't use, a lot of people don't use the car for the long trips long day run. to day. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's one of the reasons too, they don't want to okay. bring out this. Uh, so this is our bottling machine. Um, so the shake and takes that um, we've previously shown you, we do those for a few different customers. Um, we can also fill tubs with it as well. So this is all automated. The powder goes in here, gets dispersed out, goes along the conveyor belt, gets capped and down the end for quality control to be checked. Um, with the tubs, they go through, get filled, and then we manually cap them at the moment. Um, but we do use this for various things. Um, we are very solution focused, so if there is a, a sachet or something that we pre we can't do currently with the machine because we don't have the bag form or, or something, we have been known to manually create the sachets. <laughs> um, we've got a sealing machine down there. Manually do the sachets and then use the machine to trigger it to fill them, then we seal it. Yeah, so this company here has uh, just come to us. They've designed refrigerated lockers. So I'm not exactly sure who their customer base is, but apparently there's about uh, an order of 800 we can expect. So they're looking for us to actually do the steel manufacturing, the powder coating and the assembly, and then distribution straight to their customers. So again, they're specialising in the design and the office side of it, the, uh, the sales, sorry, the design and the sales, um, but they're not necessarily wanting to do the manufacturing. And we're a one-stop shop for them, because otherwise they would need to go to a steel manufacturer give them all the drawings, get all the steel done. Then they would need to uh, send some parts out for powder coating and that would be usually someone different and then they would have to work out who can do the assembly. So there's really not a company like a Semco that you can just say, yeah, give it to us, give us your drawings, we'll take care of the rest. So um, they're quite excited about it. And now they're asking, can they move into one of our offices here and just base our office out here and then we do it all for them. For uh, Kenwood, we're doing about 100 plus assemblies. So from small to big. This one is the COE floor assembly. So we start, we build this one from start to finish. So everything from scratch up until the cab. So the only thing we don't do is just the paint. Everything else we built it for them. About 40% of the cab over we supply to them with. Yeah. 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 And then we've got the seats we do for uh, Kenwood Trust. We have the fenders. We have uh, smaller assemblies like air cleaners, transprings, fuel tanks, spittle lines, and uh, what is it, front headers. And we've got front ends and the rear suspension. And we've uh, recently taken over uh, the rear axles. We are uh, in talks with them to get the front axles. And also, we've got the turtle brake belts and all the internal welds for Kenwood trucks and the motor mirrors yeah we do the windscreens for them as well oh. and the sleeper doors so sleeper doors is the one they generally use it in the to access the sleeping cabin for them so we do the toolbox and the sleeper doors and uh got the side well that's the first component for the cover side and uh We've got the overhead storages here, twin header bezels, upper bunks. So you do a very large percentage of the, yes. of the truck on the truck. Yeah. About what percentage would you say that you put together for? Oh, I'd probably months? say about uh, each truck we do about 25 to 30% of work. A lot of work. Okay. Yeah. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. So one of the guys came in here and thought that this is why I was always so happy. <laughs> um, it's not, it actually is one of the ingredients in one of the products we make here. It's a product called Gua Sha. Uh, it is a body scrub, so it's made of the vodka, bicarb soda and lavender oil. And by applying it to your skin with a, either a Gua Sha tool or a Rifumit, it actually exfoli exfoliates your skin. The gentleman who um, came up with it, I think he's 50. I actually think he's, yeah, 60. 60, 60 or 70, yeah, 60 but 70. he's got the skin of a, a baby basically. Yeah. His skin is so soft and yeah. He and really like firm and, and um, obviously what every female's chasing too. <laughs> so 
um, yeah, it's a great little product. We'll get the, the product in from uh, the Colin Cleanse. We actually manufacture we the manufacture Colin, that one. Uh, this particular one. Uh, then we'll organise the film to be created for the sachets. Uh, we'll put it on our sachet machine, which is next door. Uh, and uh, yeah, box them all up, ready for distribution straight out to the customers. So that's activated charcoal. That's kidney and um, urinary loose sleeve uh, tea. So these are all different teas. Um, over here, there's a toothpaste, um, activated charcoal here. This is a mymite, like a Vegemite, but a vegan uh, type of it. This is more colon cleanse here that we've created. So you're doing the, you're putting the product in the package, you're creating the package? Everything. Everything. So we're, yeah. we're manufacturing the product, yep. we're putting it in the package, none of it's for us, it's all for our customer, yep. and then we um, you know, distribute it as well. And somebody designs the, the style as well. Yeah, these are, you know, this is coffee, obviously, we this didn't make looks, the coffee. It looks quite good, I think. Yeah, it's not quite too bad. Nice, yeah. um, down there you've got uh, different things as well, from salts and stuff. Over here you've got pulses. Um, so these are ancient Egyptian food. So again, this is a food that we're blending and then these are kits that we've uh, manufactured as well that we'll be shipping out. So how does the client put a request to you to manufacture something like this? Do they have a specification sheet that says this is the ingredients we want, this yes. is the size of the package we want? Uh, they tend to be less organised on the size of the package. They just kind of go, hey, this is the ingredients, you know, present something to us. Right, and yeah. then come back to them with concepts on how that would look Correct. and what the size is. Yeah. Having the in-house printer makes it really easy because we can basically just say, hey, we want something roughly like this. He'll then give us a sample. We'll show the customer the sample virtually almost the same day to a degree. Um, and then uh, we're up and going from there. So this was just like a seven day box that we made for the greens. So you can buy it in bulk, just here, or you can buy like a convenient seven day, which um, the intention was uh, the girl that we're doing it for. You know, put it in a handbag. She can just take out one of a day and always make sure she gets her green just added to her bottle of water. So you're also solving the problem of what the package should look or yes. be like. Yeah, and so this was the first run. Um, they were the first run, so the customer was happy to go with it because they had a, uh, a trade show coming up, which we, I think we had 45 days to start from scratch to uh, produce everything that they wanted. Mm -hmm. How many products did we have? It was... Uh, in 45 days, we produced 22 new products, nine new yeah, so 22 new products, 9 new kits in 45 days for a customer. So, um, obviously being in the, the powders industry and the fact that they're edible and um, some of the other products we do, we do have quite a, a strict quality control. If we were in here at the moment and production was running, we actually wouldn't be able to be in here. <laughs> um, and when the girls are in here doing production, they have hair nets, they have... Um, wash their hands and everything, have gloves on, we have masks that are provided and with some of our finer powders and things we actually get the girls to wear head to toe overalls to cover their body completely because they're quite fine. So yes. Yep. So this is the T610 bunk support, yep. that's the new model of the truck Kenworth launched about yep. uh, three or four years ago. Yep. So, so what does this part do? This is uh, basically a well, we, we generally call that a barbecue because it's in the shape of a barbecue, but it is actually the components for the... So that's the front wall of the truck. That's where the seat's going to be again. That's a part of a sleeper box, but for the new model. So that's where the seat's going to be. That's where they tie the seat belt to. And on this, okay, that's the other side of that. So this is how wide it is going to be, and then they put a bed over here. So it's okay. like a bed base. Yep. The bunk goes on there for the new T16 truck, which is a... 860 mm cap. So it's about 800, yeah, 850, 60 wide. Okay. Yeah. Can you tell me a bit more about what this machine does? Yes, so this is one of our powder filling machines. Um, so what this does is um, we'll put powder.
titles into sachets. So there's very varying different, obviously, sizes of sachets. It depends on the serving quantity as to what size packaging. Some of the most, your more common ones is sort of, you know, your 60 by 110 by 20, 120, sorry, and then your stick figure is stick sachets, which are a release seal. Um, and they're sort of around the 25 to 110, by 110 mark. Um, so the sachets are actually formed by bag formats. So this machine can do up to 50 grams of product. It's a three-sided seal, which is what that one is. Um, and then we just order the bag formula to match the client's, whatever, if you decided you wanted a different size bag. Yeah, so this is our uh, setup at the moment, uh, just while we're uh, building the new area of all our different sachets uh, machines. So we'll do from light, uh, sorry, from wet to dry sachets um, and uh, bottling machine just here so we can uh, pump out uh, I think we did an order earlier uh, in the year of 120,000 bottles through that machine. Hi.